Hi, I wanted to show you how to uh, network a couple computers in X-Plane 11. It's fairly simple. Before we do though, there's one little trick that'll help make things a little bit simpler and that's to go to your start menu and select uh, settings and in settings select system and in system select about in about come up here where it says rename PC your PC will be a assigned a random name when it's uh, started up if you haven't already put a name on it uh, what I suggest you do is in all the computers that you're going to network together in the X-Plane uh, put a very recognizable name on each PC and that just involves clicking rename PC it allows you to enter the name just follow the prompts it'll take you through there and you'll have to restart your computer now you can see uh, in this case I've named this flight sim visual and I have another one I call the panel PC because I use a uh, uh, one computer to run the visual and another one to run the cockpit so that's an easy way to recognize those once you get into the network networking pages on uh, the X-Plane setup so I'm going to start up X-Plane setup and we'll see how that works okay now that we have started up X-Plane 11 on both of our computers we'll go to settings and then we'll go to the network tab and you can see up here that we have an option to set this machine's role to either master external visual or instructor operating station now the computer that we set to master is the computer that's going to control the operation of the sim it's the computer that will have our flight controls connected to through the USB port and it will be the computer that sends the information to the other uh, external visual machines. Now as we go on down we've selected master down here machines whose views are locked to ours and machines whose views are independent for our, from ours. Now a uh, machine whose view is locked to ours would be a computer that has uh, its view locked meaning that if we move the view in a, like a 3D cockpit on, on our master machine the view is going to move commensurate on the uh, in the, for the uh, visual machine, external visual. So that means that if you know if we look left, that'll look left too. If we have another monitor, based on where it was, it'll move the same amount in the left, right, up, down, forward, back, and so on. So it's locked to that view. Machines who are independent from ours would be uh, machines that are not going to have a view set and that's going to hold that view and maintain that view no matter what we do. Uh, for example, you might want a fixed view of an instrument panel and uh, you might want that to not move uh, as, the, uh, as the view outside is changing. So that would be another option that we might look at. So anyway, as you can see, you can enter an IP address, but if you've named your uh, computers and they're on the network, they'll show up those names. And that's why I said it's best to have a name here. The other advantage is using an IP address, if these uh, IP addresses are dynamically assigned by your router, which is the way most of our networks work, every once in a while your computer is going to have new things enter the network, it's going to reassign IP addresses and it will break the connection that you have. So using a, a name for the computer will automatically keep that updated. So in this case if we wanted to make the machine that was locked to ours, we could select panel of course uh, we can also get rid of that just by Xing it out and the same thing if we want independent views we can set those there and we can add multiple connections if we need them we'll just keep adding a new one and these will line up you might have external view one two and three for example uh, that's how that would work so that's basically how it configures uh, if you select external visual and make this an external visual then it tells you that the master machine is and then you can select the machine that's going to be the master machine and you would select that and that will tell it where to get the information for changing the views so that's the basics of setting this thing up um, I want to have both uh, you can adjust here the uh, transmissions per second for the uh, master machine 
to tell it how often to send information to the uh, to the slave or the external visual. Okay, I'm going to set this up on the two computers and give you a, a brief uh, a show of how this works. Okay, so here we are now. We got the uh, dialogues closed, and you can see we're at uh, Innsbruck, Austria, looking down through our surround, and there's our cockpit view. Now, I'll tell you a little trick on the cockpit view. If you use the, you want to save a view built into X-Plane is the, if you hit command and then one of the numeric keypad numbers, for example, command zero or command one on the, on the num, numpad, it will save that view. In this case, I've saved view one as my instrument panel. So it remembers that between sessions, between uh, you know days that you fly the simulator. So once you set that, uh, you, all you gotta do when you get ready to fly this airplane, and it saves it specifically for each airplane up to those 10 views, uh, it will remember that. In this case, you can see I have set up view number two, looking down at the throttle quadrant there, and uh, the uh, trim, and so on. And if I view three, it looks over uh, towards the right side of the airplane at the instruments, the ADF over there, transponder, and uh, ADF. But one is my normal view for the cockpit, and that's set up. So now I have a nice view of the instrument panel, and then outside I've set up the view forward with nothing, so it's just showing me strictly the view outside without any of the structure of the airplane. Of course, that's optional, but if you do select that, you're going to have to match up the view sizes so that everything lines up. In any case, once we have this set up, we're ready to operate. Now, there's one reason I like to run the master on the uh, computer that is um, my uh, master, is my cockpit, and that is because that the uh, GPS does not update in reverse. If I had the external view as the master and I ran this cockpit as a uh, backup, as a external view, which could be done as long as I have it, uh, you know, independent of the outside view so they won't be moving, I could, um, I couldn't, this uh, GPS won't update. Uh, it it is se runs separately. It's not a two-way connection, you know. The instruments and the altimeter and the uh, Colesman window and the uh, heading bug, those things are updated in both directions. But for some reason, at this point, the GPS isn't. So, you know, the new GPS has the ability to pop that up, and then we can click in the upper right corner to make this into a window, and then we can drag it onto another monitor. Here I have another monitor. Now it's full scale there. You might want to resize that to a reasonable size. But uh, the beauty is that you can have a, uh, another uh, GPS uh, that is on a, a separate window and that you can run that uh, on another monitor and uh, put that wherever you want it. So that uh, gives you the ability to and lay that in some, another panel if you'd like to do that and maybe not have that on the main instrument panel. So that's the reason I would suggest having the master on the uh, instrument panel. In this case, I have a much more powerful computer with a 1070 card running the external visual, and this is using a, a uh, surround system from NVIDIA. And in a future video, I'll talk about how to set up these separate views if you want a, a true geometric external visual. You do pay a price on the frame rate for that, but uh, it does work quite nicely. So what I'm going to do here then is just to demo this before I conclude the video and show you this in action. I'll release the brakes, push some power up, and you'll see the instruments responding. Oh, I forgot I don't have my brakes open up here. So let me get that. There they are. So here we go, full power. We're rolling down the runway. And you can see my instruments are all operating normally. It's a nice cockpit display. There, take off. I can't raise the gear because I got one hand on this yoke and the other one holding my iPhone here. But you can get a nice view of the airport there as we climb out. I'll try to bring it back here and give you the full effect of the instrument panel. You can see it gives you quite a nice uh, look view of the instrument panel. You can look over the instrument panel and get a better view just like in real life. And uh, it gives you some instrumentation shadows on the on the uh, 
panel and everything. It's quite quite realistic and uh, a nice way to go if uh, you want to have a separate cockpit display.